Key at 6'4", Claypool, one of the best in the NFL when it comes to contested catches, which is a major need for Justin Fields and the Bears. Since entering the NFL in 2020, Claypool ranks fifth in the NFL in receiving yards on passes thrown into a tight window. And since Justin Fields entered the NFL last year, Chicago's wideouts have the fewest receiving yards by any team on those throws. So Claypool expects to make a big difference there. And Adam, we saw the Bears trade away some big names on their defense. Roquan Smith, and Robert Quinn, but they also traded for Claypool. So what can you tell us about how this deal came together? Well, Chase Claypool was a player that the Bears have been targeting and eyeing for quite some time. They've been looking to add an offensive playmaker if we go back to all the way to the NFL draft in April. And they explored a number of options, and Claypool was somebody that they always had their eye on. But as of last week, Mike Tomlin, uh, Art Ro Dan Rooney, they didn't want to deal Chase Claypool away from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh lost this week. They revisited the conversations. The Chicago Bears offered a second round draft pick while they were talking to other teams. The Pittsburgh Steelers in the end, Pittsburgh decided that the compensation that they were getting back for Claypool made too much sense. And that's a team that has been great at turning picks into great receivers. Nobody in the league has done a better job at identifying wide receiver talent. So they'll take their two. They'll probably turn it into another Pro Bowl wide receiver. They move on from Claypool. Chicago gets the player that it coveted to match with Justin Fields because they've been looking to give him help on the offensive side of the football. So now they give him a weapon. The Steelers get a pick, and we have the makings of a trade. Ah. Kumbaya on that trade. Uh, Marcus, do you think that this is a move that legitimately makes an instant impact for Justin Fields and then even more than that beyond? Yeah, I believe it does. I mean, you, you talk about you, you showed the graphic of the tight window throws, but mm. more importantly, a guy that Justin Fields can do backyard football with. That's yeah. the most important thing. Big body, you get man to man, you get one on one. Remember, the Chicago Bears actually run the ball pretty well, like with, with Herbert and obviously Montgomery. And now that they started to implement a little quarterback run with Justin Fields. But now, when you improvise, when you extend plays to have a 6 4 big body pass catcher on the other end, potentially to find some room and just give him a chance against some DBs, will, will, I, I think it'll help this team out tremendously. The other thing about Chase Claypool, I don't think he has a low floor. I think what Key said, like if you get 800 yards a season and five touchdowns, potentially with the explosion of going up to eight to ten because he's a red area threat, that's well worth a second round pick in my opinion, especially if you have capital to go out and get somebody else that may be as dynamic. Claypool went through a lot in Pittsburgh when it comes to the quarterback situation, Big Ben getting old, bad offensive line, run game null and void. All of those things, I think, played into what we thought he was going to be from his rookie year. So I think he's a little bit better player than a lot of people think. You heard Claypool say it himself. He felt like he didn't actually get to show what he's really capable of, especially this season, but he's probably alluding to some other things too. And it is fascinating to watch a team real time like the Bears trading away some big time defensive talent to get the draft capital back, but also adding pieces for Justin Fields in their future, making sure that everybody knows they are confident in their quarterback. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.